Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to take a look at the Transformers Legacy Evolution Stunticon Minosaur Multipack. Let me know think of this exclusive multipack in the comment section down below. Is it a pickup or pass? Now this review will be my 1900 subscriber special. Thank you so much for 1900 subscribers. I will be shouting out two completely random subscribers towards the end of this review around when I'm typically doing the final thoughts on the figure. So make sure you watch till the end of the video and maybe you could get a shout out. I really do hope you enjoy this review. Let's now take a look at the figure's packaging. So here we have the packaging. I definitely think Hasbro was trying to recreate the original G1 Stunticon and G1 Minasaur packaging with this box because there's actually quite a few similarities between the two. One really good example is how they packaged and displayed the figures with this box. All five figures are actually packaged in their alt modes. And if you're wondering if there's like a plastic window there covering the figure, no, there's not. You actually can touch the figure through the packaging there in case you were wondering. But there's actually several other really good uh, examples or similarities between the two boxes. Really just kind of the layout, the design, the artwork is overall really similar between the two, which is a pretty cool kind of easter egg or reference Hasbro didn't have to do but I'm really glad they did as for the rest of the box of course we do have Transformers on the side we also do have the Legacy Evolution logo at the bottom of the box we also do have Stunticon Minasaur in white text with a white Decepticon symbol and a huge artwork shot of Minasaur in his full combined glory with his really cool sword and a blaster as for each individual figure all the figures are packaged in their almost we also do have their name or their title right next to the actual figure and also next to the actual figure we do have an artwork shot or action pose so of course right next to the Motormaster figure we do have a motor master artwork shot and of course the same for the rest of the figures as for the top of the box we do have some proc shots for all five figures in their robot and alt modes and one final one of minasaur fully combined and another legacy evolution logo with stunticon minasaur in white text with a white decepticon symbol and if we do look at the sides of the box, this side here is really just kind of a continuation of the artwork from the front. So, of course, we do have his other arm and leg there and another Legacy Evolution logo at the bottom of the box there. And if we do turn to the other side, definitely more interesting than the other one. There's actually some more proc shots here. So, really just showing off both um, all five figures, of course, in their robot and alt modes. And if we do turn to the very back of the box, uh, there's actually one kind of interesting special thing they actually did on this packaging, which we typically don't see. So if you've collected any of the Legacy Evolution figures from this Legacy Evolution line, typically if you do look at the side of the box, of course, we actually do have half of the Legacy Evolution artwork, which you can typically do for, you know, Voyagers, Leaders, and Deluxes. If you get two of this same class size or the same class figure, you actually can put both boxes together and complete the artwork. But they actually did something pretty special with this uh, figure's packaging. They actually have the full poster or the full artwork here, which we typically don't get. So it's pretty cool. You don't have to get two boxes. You can just look at it right here, which is 
really, really nice. We also do have some awesome stats below the artwork or the poster there. As for this side here, quite a bit to discuss and talk about. So, of course, we have all five figures and a Minasaur with some awesome prog shots. It actually does show off all their steps or how many steps it takes to transform them. So, of course, Wild Rider, there's a prog shot of him in his robot in all mode. Sin goes for the rest of the figures. He does transform in 14 steps. Drag Strip transforms in 16. Uh, Dead End transforms in 13. Uh, Breakdown transforms in 15. And there's a small little kind of image or prog shot showing off his alternate head sculpt, which I will show off at some point in this review. And Motor Master transforms in 23. And that is pretty much it for the packaging. So let's now get into the review. Here we have Drag Strip in his robot mode. Let's take a look at the details, starting at the very top with that head sculpt. We have some really nice dark maroon for the entire helmet section, with some light red for the visor and some really nice silver for the face. Speaking of silver, there's some more silver for this entire engine block section, sort of built in or actually sunk it into the chest, which actually really feel like how it's actually sort of deep or built inside the chest. I think it's a really cool effect. I do love the glossy black around this entire engine block section as well, with some more silver at the top of the chest, kind of the stomach region, and there's actually some more at the crotch. As for the entire base color of the figure, it's actually mostly done with this really nice kind of dark orange or kind of orange yellow mixture which is pretty interesting because typically when we think of drag strip usually we think of course his main color or his base color is that bright yellow that we're used to for his you know G1 design and G1 appearance but Hasbro actually did a bit more of a stylized approach or kind of a different approach for his color deco which is pretty interesting and if we do look at the side profile overall really not looking that bad very little back kibble or uh, back arm kibble or back leg kibble which is really good to see I'll take a closer look at the back section and just to I actually do want to uh, take a closer look at this entire side section here because there's actually quite a few nice details pretty much on the entire form guard and the sides of the legs. There's actually some wheels on the side, which quite a few people actually did have a complaint with the wheel placement or kind of the wheels at the shoulder with the last release or the last version using this mold, the Mainline Legacy Deluxe drag strip. They really didn't like how these two wheels kind of just stick out the sides of the shoulders, which I would say that's a valid complaint and actually really never bothered me with the placement of the wheels. I just never really liked how they're mushroom peg because the mushroom pegs are open and exposed and they're yellow so they really do stick out like a sore thumb. I actually really don't like uh, mind the wheels on the sides of the leg because they actually don't have that open exposed mushroom peg because it's actually painted so if they had painted these that would have been a lot better but I actually really like the racing stripes actually going from the shoulder panels all the way down the forearm and actually the side of the leg. I think that's a really cool detail and there's some very classic Decepticon symbols on the forearm of course. All those same details repeated on the other side of the figure and if we go back to the front pretty much looking at the lower portion of the figure again mostly done that kind of base dark orange kind of yellow orange mixture with some more kind of racing stripes at the feet and i definitely think hasbro missed some detailing and some paint apps for the front of the legs because this entire box set or stunt con five pack is supposed to be you know more details added paint apps and stuff like that look a bit more g1 and more cartoony i think overall hasbro did accomplish that accomplish that which is really good but i definitely think they missed an area where the front of the legs are concerned i do have to give credit where credit is due because there's actually quite a few details on this this version or this variation of the mold um that were not on the previous use or original use of this mold, like the details on the feet that was not there was actually a really boring yellow, so I'm actually really glad they added those, but I do have to say the other three Stunticon Deluxes that I'll be showing off or taking a look at in just a sec in this review, they actually did fix that problem. Their legs were super boring with their original releases, but they actually did add details for the front of the legs, so it's a shame they didn't do the same with this figure here. But overall, if we do look at the very back of the figure, overall, as I said before with the side profile, overall not looking too bad very little arm cable, leg cable, or back cable. He really does not have a backpack. He does have a bit of hollowness with the back of the arms there. That could probably be a tad bit better, but I actually do have to kind of go back to my previous complaint or point with the front of the legs. There's actually more details on the back of the legs than the front of the legs. There's some more engine block detailing with some really cool kind of tubing and wiring done in silver with some amazing sculpt work. So I really don't understand why the back of the legs are actually more detailed than the front. So I guess if you wanted to, you could probably just rotate at the waist all the way around actually have these act as the front if you wanted to but of course that would be inaccurate to the instructions but it's an option if you want to so i never really understood that unfortunately um hasbro just didn't add some details to the front of the legs i guess if you do like to custom paint or modify your toys you actually have a perfect opportunity right here but as for articulation if you do have any previous use or variation of this mold such as shadow strip or the original deluxe class mainline drag strip is the exact same articulation if this is your first time using or 
experiencing this mold, I'd say it's actually pretty good for Deluxe. So starting at the very top with the head sculpt, of course, there is rotation side to side. There is no tilt side to side, and there is also no movement up or down. Um, as for the shoulders and arms, of course, they can move out and in, forward and back. There is rotation at the bicep. There is an elbow bend past 90 on a single hinge, which is really good to see. There is no wrist rotation, which this is uh, just kind of one of those things which never really made sense to me because you actually do not transform his hand or really his form in any way. So I really don't think anything was preventing them from actually adding a wrist rotation other than budget, which is a bit unfortunate. But there is, if you do move the arms out of the way, there is a full functioning waist rotation completely unhinged which is really good to see. The legs can kick forward, back, out to the side. There is rotation on the top of the leg. There is a knee bend, and there is also an ankle pivot. And there is also some foot pivot forward and back as well, in case you're wondering. But that's mostly due to transformation. And let me just quickly straighten him up. And if you're wondering about the tolerances and QC, I actually have to say they have improved. You know, typically uh, people do wonder, you know, over the years if Hasbro does like, you know, re-release or repaint an old mold from a couple years ago which truth be told, this uh, deluxe class drag strip actually came out last year, so it's not really that old of a mold. But if you are wondering how the tolerances and joint tightness improved or gotten worse, they actually have improved. They have gotten better. But I do have to say, cautiously, some of the joints are actually probably too tight to a point where I'm actually almost scared of using some. So hopefully other copies are not tighter than mine because some of the joints are very tight, almost too tight to a point where I'm a bit worried. But overall, really good joint tightness, not worse. Um, and not the same, actually better, which is really good to see. As for accessories, they're the exact same ones that came with the original release of the small, so those two identical blasters, which you can store, kind of combined together, uh, which is pretty cool, kind of forming one weapon, and both of them, uh, both of them are blaster piece compatible, uh, and they're all done in this really nice, kind of glossy, shiny, kind of dark maroon, just like the head sculpt there, which is pretty cool. I actually typically prefer to store them separately, just kind of the dual wield style. I've always preferred that over combining them. That's just my opinion anyway, but you can store them in the hands. And as I showed the back of the figure earlier, there was actually quite a few mech tech ports you did see on the back of the figure. So if you wanted to, of course, you could store them on the back of the figure as well. But I typically do like to store them in the hands of the figure. But now for some mold comparisons, here he is with Shadow Strip. This figure was a Walmart exclusive part of the uh, Velocitron Speedy of 500 collection. And overall, of course, mold-wise, they are the exact same thing, really just a matter of preference of which deco you prefer. And please let me know in the comments of all three variations or repaints this mold so far, which one is your favorite? If I were to choose, I really can't because I actually do dislike and like things about all three versions of this mold. It's actually really hard to choose, you know? Um, I really don't know. I actually have to think pretty hard on it, but I think they do look awesome side by side. And I think it's a really, really good mold. We actually do a bit of a side look here. You want to see both sides of the figures. And that is pretty much it for that comparison. So now for one final mold comparison, here he is with the original mainline deluxe class drag strip. And I think they look absolutely awesome side by side. So again, mold wise, the exact same thing, really just a matter of preference of which deco you prefer. And there is actually things I dislike and like about both of them. Like I actually probably do prefer the more yellow look on this version over the orange. I actually probably do prefer the kind of glossy black on this entire chest section here. Uh, they actually didn't have any on this one and I actually probably do like the kind of maroon color or kind of the um dark red color for the entire helmet section rather than the purple and red. That's just my opinion anyway. But uh, same accessories, of course. Um, but of course, uh, both of them do have that problem with the very bare legs, which is unfortunate. They did not fix that problem. But that is pretty much it for mold comparisons. Now for one final comparison. Here he is with another Legacy Deluxe, that being Insecticon kick back. I think they look pretty cool side by side. And that is pretty much it for comparisons and this mode. Let's now get down to transformation. So what you want to do is just remove the accessories and put them off to the side for now like that. Then you're actually going to go to the form. You're just going to get this entire form guard piece. Rotate this forward like that. Then you're going to collapse the wheel. Just hinge that down as well. Do the exact same process on the other side. You're just going to get this entire form guard. Hinge this down. And then, of course, get that secondary wheel. Just flip that down as well. Then you're actually going to move the arms out just to get some added space and clearance to work with the figure for the transmission. You're going to rotate out the waist all the way around. You're actually going to get the feet. Collapse these up like that. Collapse them up like that. Then you're actually going to 
untab and disconnect this entire chest piece like this. Just hinge this entire section up like that. So then you're actually going to get the arms hinge these down hinge these down and they're actually on this entire separate hinge which is just going to hinge up like that so just disconnect that hinge that up you can actually get these shoulder panels that actually form the entire kind of front scoop section of the race car and as you can see there is two tabs on this side and corresponding slots on the other side and that will just all align together and tab into place like that so just tab all that in like that squeeze it together like that and then you're actually going to get this entire kind of swivel section here rotate this all the way around and as i mentioned before where the joints you know some of them were too tight this is actually a very good example the actual hinge that this entire front chest piece sits on is way too tight there's actually been some situations where this entire section will pop off it's not broken of course it's just actually held on by those kind of friction nubs but the base hinge is actually on a pin so it's way too tight unfortunately i cannot loosen that so that is a bit of a, a disappointment so i'm just going to be pretty careful with actually hinging that back but you're just going to hinge that back then you're going to fold in the head and then of course this entire section is just going to fold down there is tabs on the actual chest piece and slots pretty much on those form guard pieces and that's just going to tab into place like that and then we're of course going to go to the legs you're just going to open up the entire leg panel here on both legs just open that up and then you can actually tab both the legs together like that and this entire section will just fold in like that then you can actually collapse the little panels here and that is it for transformation of drag strip let's now take a look at the details here we have drag strip in his race car alt mode. Let's take a look at the details. Starting at the very front, we have some of the nice racing stripes at the entire front scoop section here, mostly done in light red and light yellow. Of course, for the entire base color of the race car, it's mostly made of that kind of dark orange or kind of orange yellow mixture. With some really nice glossy black for this entire front section here and all six wheels. There are three on each side. We do have the entire driver's cockpit or driver's section here. I love how the entire driver's seat is actually made out of the back of the head from the road mode, which I find pretty funny and creative. Of course, we do have some really nice mechanical detailing here, sculpted in probably like a steering wheel some gauges there's some really cool canisters also all done in silver and there's actually some more silver at this entire back section a really nice scope or kind of an engine block section in the back with some really cool circular sections and some canisters with some tubing and wiring you could probably imagine some huge flames or smoke actually spewing out or spitting out the back of the section here and in case if you're wondering if these circular sections are actually blasted piece compatible no they're not really just for design and appearance which actually looks really cool and of course the entire back fin racing fin back here mostly comprised or made out of those typical color we've seen with the rest of the figure and if we do turn to the side there's some more of those racing stripes details on the side with the very classic decepticon symbol done in purple and white outlining and of course all four front wheels are mushroom peg wheels which of course the back ones are mushroom peg wheels as well but they actually did decide to paint the mushroom peg actually the same color as the tire or the wheel which really doesn't bother me as much because it's barely noticeable these front four ones of course really do stick out like a sore thumb because the mushroom peg is yellow which truth be told if you actually do look at the other two releases or variations of this drag strip mold. They actually do the exact same thing, so I'm not really surprised to see this, but overall rolls pretty well on any surface. So now for accessory storage, of course, you can grab those two identical blasters and just store them pretty much at this back section here using those posts and ports. Just plug those in place and you can kind of, you know, weaponize or upgrade your race car, which is pretty cool. Just like that. And there we have the accessory storage. So now for some vehicle mode comparisons. Here he is with the original mainline deluxe class drag strip. And if all of course mold wise, they are the exact same thing. Really just a matter of preference of which deco you prefer. Um, but there is actually one detail I really wish they had kept from this release to this one is that the Decepticon symbol on this entire front scoop section here. I think probably the reason why they removed it is because they actually do have Decepticon symbols on the side as I showed previously. So maybe they didn't want to put too many on the figure. That's really my only guess. Maybe they're some other reason but i actually really would have liked if they actually kept that on that section i think that i thought that was a really nice detail but i think they overall look pretty cool side by side now for one final comparison here he is with the walmart exclusive velocitron speedy 500 shadow strip again same molding really just a matter of preference of which deco you prefer one thing i have to say i really like the metallic blue on this version of this mold blue is my favorite color so i might be slightly biased but that's one thing that really stands out for me i just really like that metallic blue 
But overall, that is pretty much it for comparison. So now for quickly attaching Dragstrip to his combined mode limb. So you're actually gonna wanna make sure you grab Minasaur's left arm because it's actually somewhat designed and molded all of these stunts cons to actually attach to a specific limb or a specific part of Minasaur. So actually make sure you grab the left one or it will not work. So I typically would advise to actually remove the accessories off of Dragstrip. I think it's just a bit easier. If you do like to leave them on for the combined form, of course, you can just attach them later. I just think for the combining process or for this kind of process, as I'm about to show you, it just seems a bit easier to actually handle the figure. So I'm going to remove them and put them off to the side. So you're just going to take these, put them off to the side for now. You're actually going to kind of flip the car around and make sure the entire sort of racing fin uh, section is actually facing towards you. And you're going to want to make sure it's facing towards the hand. As you can see, there's all these posts and ports, and they're just going to uh, line up and plug into place. So just make sure all this is nice and secure and snug. So just get everything tabbed and plugged into place. Then you're pretty much going to split this entire section in half. So it does require quite a bit of force. You're just gonna lift up this entire section here like that and have this sort of attached or plugged into place. There's this entire section here, kind of the waist that actually fits into that slot there. And you pretty much split the figure in half, the front half of the car and the back half of the car. And then you're going to extend the arm like that and that will just tab into place and do the same thing with the bottom portion of the arm. And you're just going to hinge that down and plug that into place then you can actually fold in the wheels and there we have our first part of the stunt con Minasaur combiner that is pretty much it for drag strip let's now take a look at the next stunt con here we have dead end in his robot mode let's take a look at the details starting at the very top with it has we have some really nice glossy black for the entire helmet section with some purple for the visor and some bronze for the entire battle mask or face region as you love all the silver and the really nice surface detailing there with some interesting kind of blue yellow and red i really wasn't expecting to see that on this figure we actually have some really nice glossy black for this entire chest section here with a very classic decepticon symbol done in purple and silver outline i think that's a really nice touch we actually have some forearm guards or kind of forearm panels done in dark red and some silver and black for the wheels at the shoulders. I think that's a nice touch. And pretty much the entire front half or front uh, side of the arm and bicep and shoulder is mostly done in black there, but actually some really nice surface detailing, some really cool kind of panels layered there, and a really nice scope work for the hands. We have some more silver for the crotch and some black for the top of the legs. One major improvement on this release of Dead End over the mainline one is actually one huge major complaint people had a lot with the original releases. Pretty much all of these Stunticon Deluxes had very bare, boring legs. Actually, quite a few people on this figure and most of the other Stunticon figures actually really wanted to rotate the legs around and actually show the back of the legs at the front because they had more details on the back of the legs than the front which never really made sense to me unfortunately they did not fix that problem on drag strip they actually did fix it on this figure and breakdown and wild rider which is a really good sign i'm actually really glad they did that that being said they didn't add a ton of pin ups but honestly any bit helps i actually think it adds a lot to the figure but if we do take a look at the legs here they actually did add these little silver kind of red and yellow bits here it is small but like i said any little add of I think helps a lot for the figure because before none of this was there. It was just a really boring, just red square for the leg. I did not like it. I do like the scope work. There's some really cool kind of panels and tubing and wiring there. Um, I think they probably should have taken maybe some cues or some design traits from a uh, uh, drag strip. I will give him some credit. They didn't add details for the legs, but they actually did add some details on his feet. I wish they had done the same for this figure here. But if we do look to the back of the figure, overall pretty well compressed and compact, of course. There is a bit of hollowness in the back of the feet there, but they actually do fold it for transformation. That's why that's hollow spaces there. But overall, very little arm cable, leg cable. He does have a bit of a backpack there, but it really doesn't get in the way of posing, so it does not bother me. And it's also not that ugly. It's just really just the front of the car. I think it looks pretty cool on the back, in my opinion. So that is it for details. So now for articulation, if you do have the mainline release or the Toxotron release of the sphere, the articulation does stay the same. And I actually would say tolerances have definitely improved. Typically, people do look, if you know Hasbro maybe take a mold from a couple years ago or even a year ago, typically people do want to know, did the mold, you know, get worse with the tolerances and the uh, joint tightness or did it get better? It actually did get better. Um... And that being said, there are a few figures here and there. I don't think there's any on uh, Dead End that I can remember. A few of the joints are, I would say, too tight to a point where I'm a bit, a bit worried. So hopefully, if you get the set, look out for that. Because there's a few joints that I'm a bit nervous about using. I don't want anything to break. But overall, in this figure, really nice tight joints. So articulation at the head, of course, can look side to side. And it cannot look up or down. And it cannot tilt side to side either. The arms can move out and in, forward and back. There is a bicep rotation and elbow bends. There is no wrist rotation. There is a full 
full functioning waist rotation all the way around. The legs can kick forward and back out to the side. There is rotation at the top of the leg and knee bends and an ankle pivot in and there's a slight pivot forward and back at the foot, which is really good. Probably one thing that I knew they were not going to fix, of course, they were not going to pretty much change the actual figure or the molding. One thing I never really liked on the deluxe specifically of the Stunticons is the uh, articulation in the hands. Pretty much none of them had a wrist rotation. Um, which I never really understood because most of these deluxe stunt cons don't actually even transform the hand or the arm. Typically, I will give them uh, deluxe an excuse, you know, if you actually do somewhat involve or actually use the arm for the transformation, which you do use the arms, but there's no real, like, actual transformation with the hand. There's nothing really preventing them from actually adding a wrist rotation, I think, probably other than budget. So, never really understood that. I think they probably could have added one. Sim goes for a drag strip. He does not have a wrist rotation, but he does not really transform his hand. It doesn't fold in, you know, it doesn't move or actually transform it anyway, so I really think they could have added that. But as for accessories, it does come with two identical blasters, the exact same molding as the previous releases, this time, of course, just in a different color, which on that topic, I think they are rather boring. They are just black. I do like the scope work. There's a really cool kind of sculpted-in scope there with a really cool kind of spike, you know, and both of them are blaster piece compatible, which is always fun. And you can store them in the hands here like that. And I think that's pretty fun to have him dual wield them. And if you are wondering if you can, you know, combine them or attach them together like drag strip, no, this is actually one of them where you cannot do that feature. Um, but I think they probably should have added some more paint apps because on the Toxitron release and the mainline one, they actually had a really nice metallic blue for the Toxitron one and a really nice metallic purple for the mainline one. So um, I think it would have been nice to add some paint apps because if you actually do look at this from the front view, you know, the entire arm is pretty much black and the entire weapon is black. So it is rather boring. If you do like a bit more of a simple deco, that's perfectly fine. If you do like this more simple of a weapon, that's fine by you. You can, if you like that, that's fine. But me personally, it seems a rather boring compared to the other weapons so maybe if they wanted to do like a metallic silver like a shiny silver like a gunmetal gray because the other weapons had you know somewhat of an interesting sort of shiny color i think they could have continued that trend on this figure but that is it for accessories so now for some comparisons here he is with the toxitron collection um and definitely i would say an acquired taste it's a very interesting deco i can understand why people probably passed on this figure but mold wise they are the exact same thing just a matter of preference of which deco you prefer. And um, I really don't know which one's my favorite. If you do have a favorite of all three versions, let me know in the comments. But at this moment, it's kind of like Dragster. Most of these stunt cons, I really don't have a personal favorite of, you know, the mainline release or the exclusive one because I actually dislike and like things about both of them. Like the weapons, as I mentioned before, I do like the metallic blue on the weapons on this release. But I actually really do like all the glossy black and the uh, really nice purple and silver on that release. I think it works really well. And the added details on the legs, like this one, the legs, just one solid color of red, which finds, which I find a bit boring. So there is some things and some things I like and dislike about both of them. But looking at them from the side, as you can see here, looking pretty cool. That is it for that comparison. Now for one final mold comparison, here he is with the mainline release. You know, I'm just looking at him from the side. And then from the front... I think overall pretty cool and there's actually quite a few added details i love all the silver the glossy black the interesting blue and yellow i was actually kind of caught off guard when i first uh, saw that when they first revealed this set i was not expecting to see those details or those colors on this figure but i actually quite like it i think it works um and again, the weapons definitely preferred on the mainline release but i think overall the added pin apps really work for this figure and for one final comparison, another figure from the Legacy Wave 3, that being the Voyager Class Armada Starscream. And that is it for comparisons. So now for transformation, you're just going to remove all the weapons and just put them off to the side for now. Just like that. And then you can actually get this entire sort of form and guard piece. Just rotate this all the way down like that. Then you can get the wheel at the shoulder. Rotate that down as well. Do the exact same process on the other side. Just rotate that down. Rotate the wheel down like that as well. 
and then you're going to get this entire back assembly here just open this entire assembly up like that then you can actually get these sections here hinge them down and how all this was tabbed together is there are several tabs and slots on this piece and of course corresponding tabs and slots on this piece and this entire back assembly of course there is two slots there and two tabs right there then you're going to get the head just get this entire assembly fold this in like that and you can definitely tell probably this area right here is very similar in transformation to drag strip especially where the arms are concerned but you're going to just fold the arms up and of course tab pretty much both shoulders or both halves together like that so just align those up and tab them into place and then these will just kind of fit into these little cavities right there like that and then you can just close up this entire assembly there like that and then you can get this entire back panel or front portion of the car this is just going to fold down right into place like that and pretty much the entire front half is all done so let's actually work at the back half now you're going to open up these panels at the front of the legs here just untab them it's actually very secure so just open that up and how that was tabbed in places there is a tab there and a slot on the inside of the panel same process for the other side just open up that panel it's pretty tight there we go and then you can actually get the feet, fold these back if they haven't already. And then you're actually going to get the legs, just fold these in or kind of collapse them in like that. And there we go. And then you're just going to bring these panels down and tab both legs together and pretty much just tab the back half of the car and the front half of the car together. And there we have the transmission of four dead ends. Let's now take a look at the details. Here we have dead end in a sports car alt mode. Let's take a look at the details, starting at the very front. I do like all this glossy black for this entire front windscreen section with some more on the sides. I do like the small details, like the little mirrors done in dark red and some uh, small little windshield wipers done in black. We have some more details like the front headlights, which I do like the scope work here. I think that's a really nice detail added to the car, but I definitely think they probably should have added some paint apps because there's no silver, no gunmetal gray to actually make them stand out from the rest of the car. They're just done in that same sort of dark red as the same base color of the car. So they do kind of blend in and are lost with the rest of the car, which interesting enough, the actual two previous uh, uses or versions of this mold actually do have some silver and gunmetal gray for the helots, which make it pop more. So I'm not really sure why Hasbro decided to take that away, but I do like this really interesting stripe going from the front of the car all the way to the back, really nice kind of goldish silver and why I think that looks really good. And if we do look at the side overall, pretty good here with some more glossy black and dark red. I do like the wheels are full reels, um, in case you're wondering, are mushroom peg, which typically I don't prefer i always do prefer pins but this is a deluxe so no surprise there and of course the two previous uh versions did also have mushroom peg wheels but as long as of course you actually cannot see the open exposed mushroom peg i really don't mind i do like the silver and the glossy black for the tire with the really cool indents and i think it overall rolls pretty well across the ground in any surface and if we do look at the back there's actually some more of that glossy black for this entire back window here we actually do have somewhat of a small little kind of um race car fin back here as well some more of that kind of gold and silver and if you're wondering if this figure or this release of the dead animals has that same connection problem in the back yes it does truth be told i'm not really that surprised because the previous two uses had that same problem as well i really was not expecting to hasbro to finally fix the problem after the third release or the third version of the mold really was not expecting or hoping for that i really didn't want to get my hopes up so unfortunately it does still have that same problem but i've actually had to get it i've actually gotten it pretty flush before there's always somewhat of a crevice but i've actually Actually had it pretty close and never perfect though but if we do look at the other side pretty much the exact same details repeated except there is actually an added Decepticon symbol here I actually really would have liked maybe if they put one also on the other side but they chose to only put it on this side interesting enough but it's like the very shining kind of glossy white and purple I think that looks very classic very iconic and that is it for details so now for accessory storage you actually can add the two identical blasters just to this kind of back section here using those posts and ports those will just plug into place like that's and I've always actually really liked the storage this storage and also wild rider storage because it actually kind of makes the weapons slightly angled they're actually slightly pointing up and I always found it really cool to have a sports car with like two big machine guns in the back I always thought was that just looked really really awesome and if you're wondering of course both these are plastic piece compatible and they're the exact same sculpt but that is it for accessory storage so now for some Ultima comparisons here he is with the most recently uh, released before this one this is the Toxitron collection Walmart exclusive GT Universe dead end um 
and definitely one of the most interesting decos of Dead End we've actually seen in previous years. Uh, very interesting color scheme, very interesting details added on there. I actually really like the metallic blue. I definitely think of all of the weapons or the deco of the weapons. Of course, all three versions have the same uh, tooling or molding of this uh, identical weapon, but probably the color scheme is the most boring with this release. I think the black is a bit boring and bland. This actually has a really nice metallic blue and uh, black, and the original actually has a really nice metallic purple and black, which I think looks the best. So a little bit bland and boring for me for this release. Um, and also, I do like the silver for the headlights. Again, I really don't know why they just decided to do nothing with this release. I think that's a bit odd, considering this is a Hasbro Pulse exclusive pack, you know, and they kind of did promise and sort of advertise these figures to have more paint apps, more details, you know, look a bit more G1, a little bit more classic. So I really don't understand why there's less paint apps on this release than in the other ones. That really doesn't make sense to me. But molding-wise, the exact same thing, really just a matter of preference of which deco you prefer. Let me know the comments of all three versions of this mold, which one is your favorite. I really can't choose right now. It's kind of like Draft Trip. I'm actually a bit indecisive because I actually like and dislike things about all of them. So I'll have to maybe choose some that I really don't know right now. But for one final comparison, here he is with the original, the mainline release of the Legacy Deluxe Class Dead Ends. And interesting enough, they're actually very, very similar in this mode, of course, to take into account the weapons are on there, but I'm really just taking a look at the car specifically, but they are very similar. The reason why I'm actually kind of surprised by this is because, you know, with the previous stunt economy, we took a look at uh, Drag Strip. In both modes, you could obviously tell, of course, they were different. You could obviously tell there was the mainline release, and you could obviously tell the Hasbro Pulse exclusive release, because one was like a really bright yellow one was a really kind of dark orangish yellow so you can really tell them apart in both modes but for this figure it's actually kind of the opposite I, um, when I did that comparison in the remote you could definitely tell there's quite a few details and paint apps that were different but in this mode they're very very similar almost the exact same thing the only thing that's really giving it away is of course the weapons and this stripe here really the only major change is of course on this release is kind of a yellowish gold and this is a bit of more of a kind of gold silver mixture but other than that they're very very similar which I'm kind of surprised by, but I think they overall look very cool side by side. Definitely one thing I prefer on this one is the added Decepticon symbols on the side. Again, I wish there was one on both sides. There's only one on the other side. This one has none, so I definitely prefer that on there. And I probably do prefer the metallic purple on the weapons over just the solid black. I find that a bit boring for me. But that is it for comparisons and this alt mode. So now for combining Dead End to his combiner limb or combiner part. Just like I said with drag strip, I would definitely advise to take the weapons off because they typically do kind of just get in the way. You don't want them falling off or kind of messing with what you're trying to do. You can leave them on if you want to. I just always found it a bit easier just to add, uh, just adds a bit more room and space where you actually work with the figure and the combiner pieces. So I'm just going to take those off. And if you do want to have them on for the combiner mode, because you can, you can have all the accessories stored on Minnesota or when he's fully combined, you can just add him later. It's very, very easy. So just kind of flip the car around, make sure this entire back fin section is kind of facing towards you or uh, towards the hand. And just like drag strip, of course, make sure you actually grab the right arm for dead end. And of course, uh, drag strip is the left arm because they actually did, did design and sort of mold the figures and the combiner pieces in a specific way where, of course, one figure corresponds to one part. You really cannot swap out or kind of customize it, which I actually kind of like. I think it makes it a bit more special. Um, but then you're going to get the right arm here. And of course, you can align all these posts and all these ports and just plug them into place. Make sure everything is nice and squeezed down there and compact and compressed. And then you can just get this entire section here and split it in half like that. So we have the uh, front half of the car and the back half of the car. The back half, of course, make sure that's facing towards the hand. If it's not, you definitely did something wrong. Then you're going to fully extend on this hinge all the way up to kind of form the shoulder there. And then you can get this entire section towards the hand here, get this entire section, hinge this down to form pretty much the wrist and the hand area. And then you can actually fold in the wheels and just kind of bend at the elbow. And there we have the next part of Minasaur. And I think that's pretty much it for Dead End. Let's now take a look at the next Stunticon. Here we have both Wild Rider and Breakdown in their robot modes. Let's take a look at the details. I'm going to start off by taking a look at the details of Wild Rider. So I'm just going to move Breakdown off to the side for now. I'll bring him back in just a sec in this section of the review. So starting at the very top, I do love all the glossy red for the entire face, the metallic purple for the eyes, and the glossy black for the entire helmet section. All the dark gray and the red for the front of the arm looks really cool, and the hands with lots of silver and glossy black for the entire chest. And I do like all the little details like the yellow and blue. Not a big fan of the open exposed screw holes. That's actually the same case with 
the breakdown. Not a big fan of that. It really would have been nice if they filled those in. And there's some more silver at the crutch and waist. And I love the little kind of oil drums or oil canisters at the front of the legs as well. Would have been nice if they actually kind of decked those out in some silver gum and gray to maybe make them pop more. We have some really nice yellow, silver, and red for the front of the legs and the feet with some really cool kind of venting sort of layer detailing there, layer panel detailing at the front of the legs. There's actually some more at the stomach or kind of chest region. And if we do look at that sub profile, overall not too bad. We actually have a very nice classic Decepticon symbol sort of at the elbow region. If you're wondering if there's one on the corresponding arm or the other arm, yes, there is in case you're wondering. And do you like the kind of wheels on the side of the legs and the backpack? Um, and yes, the backpack is pretty bad. That was probably one of the main talk points of the Transformers committee when this figure was first revealed. Same goes for Breakdown because they both kind of have that same sort of backpack uh, style or kind of a appearance and design. Um, but truth be told, actually, I think when I first reviewed the Mainline uh, Breakdown and Wild Rider, I think I probably went too hard on this mold and this figure. I still do think Wild Rider and Breakdown are probably my least favorite of the stunt cons, but I think I probably do like them more than I did before when I first originally reviewed this mold. And yes, the backpack isn't the greatest. I definitely think Dead End and Dragster probably have a much cleaner back, even Motormaster as well. That's true, but there's actually sort of two different variations or ways you can actually display this backpack. So there's this more spread out way and there's more of a collapse way. And I'll show the collapse way or the different way on breakdown in just a sec whenever I actually take a look at that figure in its details. Um, but truth be told, as far as backpacks go, this is definitely not the worst I have seen. The legs are actually pretty clean, and a really good positive for this figure is the backpack does not get in the way at all of articulation or posability. That's probably one of the worst parts of backpacks. That's really where I uh, don't like backpacks or, you know, the kibble. It's That's usually when it bothers me, when it actually interferes with the posability, but it doesn't, so it really doesn't bother me that much. But no waffling pretty much at the back of the legs, no kibble at the back of the arms or anything, so pretty clean back here overall. And now for articulation if you do have any previous use of this mold such as the mainline wild rider or even the mainline breakdown it's pretty much their uh, same articulation for both figures so um starting at the top of course the head can look side to side it cannot look up or down and it cannot tilt side to side either the arms can move out and in forward and back there is an elbow bend to a pretty good degree there is nothing out of the hands and like i was saying before you might think oh because there's all that kibble he doesn't have a waist rotation but he actually does which is pretty cool to see um so that can rotate all the way around completely unhindered. The legs can kick forward, back, and out to the side. There is rotation at the top of the leg. There is a knee bend and an ankle pivot. And there is also some slight uh, foot pivot forward and back as well. And let me just quickly kind of straighten him up, get him back to a neutral pose. And as far as tartanses go, they actually have improved, just like the previous deluxes I've actually shown or took an, uh, taken a look at in this review, like Dead End and Drag Strip. Um, usually, I, I do want to mention this, you know, for all the figures in this uh, multi-pack set, because usually when Hasbro takes, you know, a figure from maybe one year ago, like this figure, or even more years ago, five or six or something, usually people want to know, um, did it degrade? Did their articulation in the QC get worse or better? Actually, I think it's gotten better. Truth be told, though, um, pretty much on all my copies of the Mainline Centicons, I don't think any figure was, you know, loose or bad. I just think they probably have improved upon what was already good, which is really good. Um, and now for accessories, he already does come. He does come with those same two kind of uh, pistols that we've seen before with the previous Wild Rider release, which I think they're pretty cool. I definitely do prefer the color deco or kind of the color scheme they actually chose for the mainline one over this one because they had a really nice metallic purple. I think that would have been awesome if they kept it for the figure because he actually has some metallic purple in his eyes. That would have been really, really cool. I don't know why they took those away because it is rather boring that they're just black. That being said, I do like the molding and the tooling, the really cool kind of scope, you know, and both of them are Blaster Beast compatible. And just like um, Drag Strip, you can actually attach both weapons together to sort of form one, but I always kind of prefer the dual build. That's just my opinion. But now for some comparison series with the original mainline Wild Rider. As you can see, I really love that metallic purple. Really wish they kept that. I don't know why they removed it. And if they did remove it, I would have been fine if they substituted it with another color, but unfortunately they just did not even replace it with another color. It's just solid black. So I do find that a bit boring, but let me know in the comments of the two Wild Riders. Which one do you prefer? Mold-wise, they're the exact same thing, really just a matter of preference of which deco you prefer. I definitely prefer the exclusive release. I just love all those added paint apps on the chest, the front of the legs. That was one of my main glaring issues of pretty much all the Stunticons, except Motormaster. He can stay out of this. Um, 
He's, I uh, never really had a problem with him, but the front of the legs were just so boring and bare, as you can see here, very little paint apps, very little details. There was some nice sculpt work, but it was just so dull. So I do like all these added details, like the silver, the red, the yellow on the feet and the front of the legs, that does add a lot to the figure. And they also fixed that on breakdown, which is really nice. I'll show that comparison between the breakdowns in just a sec. But if you do want to look at this side, we actually have some added Decepticon symbols that were not on there before. I do have to say one thing I also like on this release is the red stripes. I really wish they had kept that. Like maybe they could have gone through or sort of underneath the Decepticon symbol. That would have been pretty cool. And that is it for that comparison. So now for another Legacy Wave 3 Deluxe. Tarantulas. Looking pretty cool side by side. And for one final comparison, here he is with his packmate and his moldmate breakdown. So if you didn't know, if you were wondering why, oh, why is Thundertron reviewing or taking a look at two uh, Stunticons at the same time when he reviewed or took a look at the other Stunticons separately or individually in this multi-pack review? Well, these two are actually somewhat of the same mold, somewhat of the same base. You know, they do have some differences, which I'll actually uh, talk about and show off right now. Um... And let me know the comments of this, you know, same mold, this kind of a uh, Wild Rider mold. Which one do you prefer, Breakdown or Wild Rider? I think I've always preferred the version of the variation of Wild Rider over Breakdown, but the differences are the head sculpt, the chest, the entire backpack region, and the back of the legs. As far as I can tell, you know, also there is some new accessories, but just on the figure alone, that's all I've been able to actually find. Uh, maybe there could be some more, because sometimes there are some very, very microscopic details that some people don't find for years, you know, and some days someone reviews one, they're like, hey, I found a new detail. So if you know of any other uh, mold changes, let me know in the comments. Um, I do know the crotch is slightly different. I think just this entire section here, but I think the crotch itself, this little area there is the same, but this top section is different. But if you do want to look at the side, overall, pretty similar from the side. And we do have the backpack. As I mentioned before, there is two kind of versions or variations of the backpack. As you can see, this one's a bit more clean. This one's a bit more spread out. Really just up to you what kind of configuration or look you're going for. I actually tend to have a one, you know, with the spread out one and one with the more compact one just to have them tell apart a bit more because like I said before, they are repaints and retools of each other. They share that same base the most. So I want to be able to make the figures look as different as possible, you know, look like brand new figures, not just repaints or retools. Um, um, but I think they look pretty cool. And that is it for comparisons for Wild Rider. So I'm actually now going to take a look at breakdowns here. Here, So I'm just going to move Wild Rider off to the side for now. So starting at the very top with a head sculpt, I love all the red for the face, the yellow for the eyes, the blue for the entire helmet section, some really nice blue and silver for the chest with that same really cool kind of layered effect on the stomach region. Again, not a big fan of those huge opening uh, exposed screw holes. And there's some really nice white and blue for the entire arm with some small little details of the shoulders, the kind of yellow and red details there, and those same kind of oil drums at the uh, top or kind of the front of the legs there looking pretty cool. Again, maybe some added details would have made them pop a bit more, and I do love all the shiny, glossy blue for the front of the legs and the feet with those added silver, red, and yellow details. And if we do look at that side profile, overall very similar to Wild Rider, of course, really just depending how you want to display that backpack region, but very similar. Um, I guess there is actually some other details that they uh, actually changed from the uh, mainline one, this little black strip there, but that mostly comes into play for uh, the car mode. And if we do flip to the back overall, pretty clean back here. This is definitely, if you want, you know, the most uh, neat and tidy of the backpacks that probably will uh, appeal to you the most, I think. Um, but as far as the back of the arms and legs go, pretty clean and put away. And I'm actually going to skip our art articulation on this figure because it's the exact same as Wild Rider and it's the exact same as the previous breakdown. So no change there. And tolerances, again, like Wild Rider, have definitely improved. As for accessories, they are the exact same ones that came with the mainline breakdown. So he does come with this blaster, which I think overall looks pretty cool. It is not blaster based compatible in case you're wearing. So you can store this in his hand or you can actually also use this sort of a hilt or kind of a handle for a weapon. So that's actually where his second accessory comes into play, this sort of back fin piece, which this is another one of those major focal uh, talking points about a uh, breakdown here. People did not like how they actually use the back fin from his car mode as an accessory or a weapon. So you technically can just put this put this in his hand if you want to. I've seen people sort of use it as like a, a weapon or kind of a dagger or a sword if you want to, or you can actually attach it to the blaster and actually have it act as a blade, which again, truth be told, I actually probably like this weapon more than I did before. I, I went pretty hard on this figure, you know, I really didn't like it at first, but I think I've kind of grown to, to like it. But you can store that in his hand there, and I think that looks pretty cool. 
Um, I have seen people actually store it on the back of the legs, which is where it goes in the Karma, those same two ports, and of course the posts on the actual thing. So if you want to, you can plug it into the back of the figure, or you can actually have it act as the weapon. As for his third and final accessory, it's technically, you know, a new accessory to the figure, but also not. It's a bit hard to describe. So he actually does come with an alternate head sculpt. And if you're wondering with Breakdown, which one does he come uh, with uh, packaged on him, you know, in the packaging, like which one does he start off with? It's actually the alternate head sculpt, which is this one right here. But if you do not like this new alternate head sculpt, you actually can uh, swap it out with the same one that came with the mainline release. So this is the mainline release here. Um, I'm going to try and show it as much as I can. I know I have really big hands, but... Um, this is the mainline one and this is the new one. I'm actually going to keep the new one on, which I'm actually really glad it came packaged that way because I always get really scared about swapping out heads because I don't want to cause any damage or stress marks or breakage. So really glad that one came packaged on. Also, I do have the mainline release so I can have one breakdown with the alternate head sculpt and one with the uh, traditional same one. So it gives you a really nice option. But now for some comparisons, here he is with another deluxe from Legacy Evolution Wave 1. If you don't recall, breakdown was actually kind of confusing. Some people actually regarded him a part of Legacy Evolution Wave 1. Some people actually was like, no, he's from, you know, the uh, Legacy, not Legacy Evolution. So it's kind of up in the air, but here they are together. And for one final comparison, a mold comparison, here he is with the original breakdown from the main line. I think they look pretty cool side by side. Same accessories, same molding, really. Just um, some added details, you know, some silver and stuff, which I think looks pretty cool. And we do have a side view here. Overall, pretty cool. And that is it for comparisons and both Wild Rider and Breakdown's robot mode. Let's now get down to transformation. So now for transformation, I'm only going to be transforming Breakdown, not Wild Rider as well, because the transformation for both Breakdown and Wild Rider is pretty much the exact same thing, so I really don't see a purpose or a point in transforming both, but what you're going to do is go to the arms, just hinge these out, then you can actually fold in the hand or fist into that little cavity in the forearm, and of course do the exact same process on the other side, just hinge the arm out and fold in the hand, and then you're going to pretty much open up this entire chest panel, just kind of fold this down, then fold in the head, then of course you can just close that back up how it was before. Before, then you can rotate at the waist so the front of the legs are now facing the back of the figure then you can actually flip up the feet flip up the feet like that then just open up this entire panel at the front of the leg open that up just like that then you can actually pretty much fold up the entire leg or kind of collapse it to form the entire back half of the car as you can see there is actually quite a few kind of corresponding tabs and slots from this entire back section and of course the back section of the car and that will just tab into place like that do the exact same process on the other leg just fold this up like that then you can actually tab both halves or both legs together like that just squeeze that together and into place and then of course just tab that in there as well then you can actually go to the bottom these will just fold in like that then you can actually go to the arms there is a tab on the arm and a slot pretty much with this entire wheel section there and that will just tab into place like that do the exact same process on the other side so just fold the arm in and that will tab into place. Then you can actually get this entire sort of backpack section or front section of the car. As you can see, there is two tabs here and some small little slots, and that will just slide through and tab into place. It can be a bit tricky. You really just have to go from side to side, you know, and just sort of wiggle it into place, and then it will get there. So just slowly get both halves into place like that. And then of course the final step, there's this entire top panel here. There is a tab there and a slot right there that will just tab into place like that. And that is it for the transformation. But as you can see, this car is pretty much incomplete. So we actually do have to add the accessories to complete the transformation and the car mode. So of course you're going to add this entire fence section to the back of the car. There is two posts and two ports and you can just tab it on there like that. And I will show the accessory storage or the weapon storage as well. So there is this blaster and there's a small little kind of slot or cutout and there is this tab in the actual weapon and that will just tab into place like that and there we have the accessory storage for breakdown i'm actually going to show the accessory storage for wild rider as well so the two identical blasters can just store at the back of the car using those posts and ports like that and that is it for accessory storage and transformation let's now take a look at the details 
So here we have both Wild Rider and Breakdown in their alt modes. Let's take a look at the details. I'm going to start by taking a look at the details of Wild Rider. So I'm just going to move Breakdown off to the side for now. So starting at the very front, I like all the silver for the entire front hood section here with a very classic Decepticon symbol done in dark purple. And of course, the entire base color of the car is mostly this kind of dark gray, almost gunmetal gray black color. All the windscreens or the window section has done this really nice dark evil red color, which I do quite like. It actually has a lot of character and personality to the car. And it's actually very, very menacing. Of course, this entire back back section here is mostly comprised or made up these two sort of machine guns or blasters which are his accessories if you want more of a kind of clean simple look you can remove them and put them off to the side if you want to but I actually do prefer them there I do have a complaint though because if you actually do have the last release or the original release of this mold his weapons originally were actually made of a black and a really nice metallic purple unfortunately they actually removed that metallic purple which I'm a big fan of that was actually probably one of my main complaints about this exclusive set or this exclusive pack you know they're supposed to be more paint apps they're supposed to look a bit more cartoony more or G1, which I think overall they did accomplish, but a lot of the weapons have had less paint apps, not more, which I'm not for, because considering most of Wild Rider's color scheme is, you know, dark colors, simple colors, I really don't think we should have solid black weapons. I really wish they had kept that metallic purple, or maybe substitute it with a different color. I think that would have added a lot to the vehicle and the character or the figure, but if we do look at the side, of course, mostly the wheels are done that silver and black. Unfortunately, the back two have that open exposed mushroom peg, which I'm not, which I'm not a big fan of. The front two have the mushroom mushroom peg but it's covered so I actually do uh, prefer that design a lot more and it overall rolls pretty well across the ground and the other details of course you actually do have a small little sculpted a mirror and a very classic Decepticon symbol done in purple and white outlining and all the details on this side are repeated the exact same on the other side in case you're wondering but now for some comparisons here he is with the original use of this mold the mainline legacy deluxe wave 3 uh, wild rider I think they overall look pretty cool side by side and mold wise they are the exact same thing really just a matter of preference of which deco you prefer in my opinion i probably do prefer the exclusive release not to say there are actually things i do um like more on the mainline one i just think overall for the alt mode the room mode you know just the overall design and deco i probably do prefer the exclusive release but let me know in the comments of the two which one do you prefer um so some things like this on this release i probably do prefer like the weapons as i was mentioning before the metallic purple does look better but i actually do like the silver on the front hood there and uh all the Decepticon symbols on the sides on this one were not present on that one, which I definitely do prefer those added details on there. Uh, there is actually some red stripes on the sides. I probably do prefer that. I wish they kept that on this figure. So yeah, it is kind of a toss up, but if I had to choose right now, again, the exclusive release definitely does win. But overall, uh, two really cool cars, definitely kind of war-torn, battle-ready, very post-apocalyptic style to me with the weapons at the back. I've always just really liked that storage. I think it looks super cool, but that's it for that comparison. Now for one final comparison, here he is with his mold mate and his pack mate breakdown. And overall, I would say really the only major differences that I've actually been able to pick up, of course, there could be a very, some very microscopic hard details that I can actually come up with or see. So if there's any more that I may have missed in this review, let me know in the comments. But of the major ones, you can obviously tell of course are the accessories he does not come with those same two identical blasters he comes with a little back fin piece and that small blaster underneath the car um the entire front section of the car here kind of the hood that is completely different and the back section i would say really the main mid section or kind of the center section of the car is the exact same um if you do want to see the back of course uh pretty different in design this one's a bit more slanted with all those panels kind of going down uh, and there's no space of course no mech tech ports for those accessories uh, and the front section, as you can see. But you can definitely tell some similarities for the top section and the window section there. That looks pretty similar. And also, if you do have a preference on this mold, this uh, Wild Rider mold, if you do prefer Breakdown or Wild Rider, let me know in the comments. Probably if I had to choose right now, I definitely do prefer the Wild Rider kind of version or variation of this mold, in my opinion anyway. And that is it for comparisons. So now for attaching Wild Rider to his combiner limb. It actually does take a bit of modification. There's also a few other, other things I do want to say. So just like the arms, there is actually kind of a specific way in which you attach the figure to the part. So Wild Rider does attach to the right leg and Breakdown does transform to the, uh, or attach to the left leg. Also, I would advise to remove the accessories. You do not have to. I know uh, some people actually like to keep the accessories on for Menasaur. I typically do myself. Sometimes I will leave them off, but just for the process of 
of combining the figure to the piece, I find it a bit easier because, of course, you don't want the weapons getting in the way or falling off or anything like that. It does allow a bit of extra space. So I'm going to remove them because remove them, it actually does make it a lot easier. So I'm just going to take these and put them off to the side for now. So now for the kind of transformation or modification, you do want to get this entire front windscreen section here, hinge this out, and then you're going to get the entire front of the car, hinge this out as well. And then you can kind of rest that against that piece right there. And there we have the transformation of sort of the back foot or leg portion of the combiner. So then of course you're going to bring out the right leg here. And as you can see, there is quite a few posts and ports and slots and tabs, and all that is just going to align up. And there's actually a pretty cool kind of spring loaded feature. So once you actually attach Breakdown and Wild Rider, this entire button back here will get pressed. And this entire panel section, these two panels will actually flip forward to actually fill in that hole, which I think is a pretty cool feature. I really wouldn't say it's like, you know, needed. They probably could have easily just had, you know, a panel always there with no gap, but it's still a pretty fun feature. So this part can be a bit tricky. You really just have to have some, you know, patience and just align all those posts and ports up like that. Just kind of go, you know, side by side like that. Just kind of align them up and compress them into place like that. There we go. And you'll know uh, once it's fully attached, of course, once this area here is pretty flush. So there we have Wild Rider fully attached to his combiner limb. Let's now take a look at the details of Breakdown. So quickly bringing Breakdown out here. Hopefully you can see him well. I know I do have a white background with a very white figure. So hopefully it's not, you know, completely exploding or disappearing with my background. But here we do have Breakdown. I think he looks really cool. I do like the dark kind of grayish white tinted windows with a very classic Decepticon symbol. Uh, they're really shiny and glossy and purple with white outlining. I do like that little kind of square area of uh, dark red there as well with the back fin. It's actually pretty cool how it's one of his accessories. Actually, truth be told, I think I was probably too hard on this release at first. You know, I did review the mainline release quite a while ago last year. I think I was probably too hard on it. I know a lot of people just did not like the whole back fin section becoming accessory, but as of right now, I actually kind of like it. It's a pretty cool sword accessory, but if we do look at this side, there's actually some added details here, like that strip of blue. I think that looks really good. There's some more black there. And the wheels kind of like, you know, Wild Rider, the back two have the open exposed mushroom peg, but the front two don't. I definitely do prefer this appearance or this design. And I think it overall rolls pretty well across the ground. And we do have the other blaster store at the bottom. I think that's really good storage. We typically don't really have accessory storage that actually goes to the bottom of the figure. Usually it stores on the top, like the back fin. So I think that's really cool. Extra points for that. And I think everything is pretty well put away. So now for some comparisons, here he is with the original original mainline deluxe breakdown and I think they overall look very cool side by side and they're the exact same thing no mold changes and they're actually pretty similar in deco um, and appearance as well I'd say really the only thing that really stands out to me is the white I think it's a bit more of a kind of yellow cream white on this one and this is more of just kind of a straight white also this entire section here is slightly different the Decepticon symbol is a bit more in the corner this one's a bit more in the center also the shade and somewhat design of the Decepticon symbol is different as well um and the accessories are the same, in case you're wondering. Um, as of right now, I really don't have a preference. If you do have a preference of the breakdowns, uh, let me know. Um, I, th I would say there's definitely more differences with the Wild Riders, you know, the uh, exclusive and the mainline. These two are pretty similar, so I really can't choose right now. Um, but overall looking very very cool and that is it for comparison so now for attaching breakdown to his combiner limb it's pretty much the exact same process as wild rider so again i would advise to take out the accessories because it can you know sometimes get in the way the back fin i do like to you know have on in the combined form but i actually really would remove this because it does kind of you know jut out and stick out and you don't want you know it to snap off or fall off so i'm just going to remove this for now and attach it later same goes with the blaster at the bottom you don't want this getting in the way again and you probably could leave it on. It's really just kind of a precautionary measure, but just like Wild Rider, you do want to slightly transform or modify the figures. You just get this entire front windscreen section here, hinge this out to get this entire front portion of the car, hinge that out as well, and just kind of rest this piece against the front of the car like that. And then you're going to bring out the left leg like this. And of course, that same process and connection, the posts and ports, and just align all of that. And of course, it does have that same sort of spring-loaded feature with that button, and it can close. I think it's pretty fun. Again, probably not the most needed. Like, if they wanted to not do this feature, maybe take all that budget from that uh, gimmick and put it into something else, I probably would have been okay with that. But you just align up all these posts and ports. It can be a bit slippy sometimes. You just have to get all those connections in and compressed. And again, how you know it's ready is, of course, this entire 
entire section here is really nice and flush, but that is pretty much it for Breakdown and Wild Rider. Let's now move on to our final Stunticon. Here we have Motormaster in his truck alt mode. Let's take a look at the details, starting at the very front. You'll love the silver for the entire front grille section there with some really nice dark purple for the windows and the windscreen with some more purple on the top with some really nice circuitry detailing, mostly coming into play later for the robot mode. They actually kind of form the front of the legs and the knees, but still looks pretty cool on the top. And you'll love the dark black for the base color of the truck, looking very menacing and scary and tough and battle ready. you like the small little kind of ladder and also mirror detailing on the side with some really nice nut and bolt detailing all across the entire truck. And I do love the attention to detail with the wheels. If you actually do look the wheels, all the wheels from the truck to the trailer, actually that same design repeated on this side and the other side, which so I really do like that. And I'm pretty sure all the wheels are pinned if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, so it does roll pretty well across any surface. If we do look at this back trailer section here, I do love the base color, that kind of silver gunmetal gray mixture with the really nice purple and silver striping from the front of the trailer to the back. And all the details on this side are repeated on the other side in case you're wondering. If you do move the truck out of the way, there's actually some more details covered up. That's actually the chest of Minasaur, but still actually looks pretty cool there with that really big Decepticon symbol and all that really nice surface detailing done in glossy black. And as for accessory storage, I'm not really going to cover that or show them now because they actually are, are already um, all stored inside the trailer and you really can't store them or use them any other way. So that's going to mostly come into play later for the combined mode and Motor Masters robot mode. So now for some quick comparisons here, you guys actually with a mold mates or the original use of this mold. Hopefully I can get all of this in shot because they're two really, really big trucks but I'm gonna try. So here we have the original Mainline Legacy Commander class. And of course, this is the exclusive one. And mold-wise, they are the exact same thing. Of course, really just a change in deco and some pin apps. really just a matter of preference of which one you prefer. And in my opinion, I definitely prefer the exclusive release. Let me know in the comments of the two, which one do you like more? And that is it for that comparison, I'm just going to move that off to the side, and I will have another robot mode comparison of the Motor Masters, of course, after I transform this figure. But now for one final comparison, here he is with another truck bot, that being the Earthrise Optimus Prime. And I think they look very cool side by side. As you can see, Motor Master just dwarfs and towers over Optimus, which I definitely think the scaling here does work. I think it makes sense. And that is it for comparisons and this truck alt mode. Let's now get down to transformation. So now for transformation, I'm going to start off by transforming Motor Master into his robot mode. Then we'll transform the trailer into the base mode. So what you're going to do is go to these panels here, just hinge these out. Then you can actually collapse this panel in. It's actually going to tab into the inside of that panel. Make sure it's actually fully flush or we'll make problems later during the transformation. So you're just going to, again, bring that panel out, fully tab in and make it completely flush with that panel there. Then you're going to flip to the underside, get these wheels, fold these in fold these in like that, then you're actually going to get these panels on the top section here and just kind of push these up and get your nail there and of course hinge those out. Do the exact same process on the other side. So just get this entire section here, hinge this forward like that. And then you're going to hinge these panels down and how this will tab in place is there's two slots and two tabs and both those panels will just tab into place like that. Make sure those are nice and secure and locked down. Then you can actually disconnect this back panel. There is actually a tab on the inside of this panel here and a slot on the main body of the truck. Again, disconnect that panel there. Then you can actually just split this entire front section like this. And then you can pretty much completely unravel and extend the leg like that. So just fully hinge and extend the legs like that. Then you can actually get the foot, hinge this out and rotate it around and bring that back in. Same process on the other side. So just rotate the foot all the way around and bring that back in. Then you can go to the very back of the figure, just hinge the legs all the way up like that. And then you can fold these panels in and tab that into place, fold these panels in and tab that into place. And then of course these side panels that I showed off before, there is a tab there and a slot right there. That is just going to tab to the side of the leg like that. Same process on the other side. And there we have the legs all done. And if they haven't already, unfortunately, on my copy, the arms in this section here is very loose. They really do not want to stay. So I do apologize about that. But um, if they haven't already, of course, just disconnect these and how these were tabbed in places. There is a tab there and a slot right there. I really don't know why they don't stay. I guess it's just kind of a weird QC problem. But you're just going to hinge the arms out and down. And there's pretty much a tab where the armpit is and a slot right there. And that's just going to tab into place. Do the exact same process on the other side. And then you're going to get this entire section here. As you can see, there's this kind of little groove or slot section. And these little bars is just going to slide over the head like that. And it's going to tab into the back. There is a tab there and a tab there and a slot. So you're just going to lock 
all that into place like that. And then as for the remaining few steps, you're just going to open up these panels in the back of the arms. You're going to flip out the hands like that, then close that up. Same process on the other side, just flip out the hands like that and then close it up. And there we have the transformation for Motormaster. So let's now transform the base mode. So of course you're going to need the trailer. I'm actually gonna hinge the camera up and get as much space as I can because this is gonna get pretty messy pretty quickly. So you're just going to get this entire front portion here and separate it from the back of the trailer. I do apologize if there's kind of a sudden jolt like that because it's very secure. As you can see, there is a ton of posts and ports and slots that's how all that was tapped into place. You're just going to kind of separate that and you can put this section off to the side for now because we're mostly gonna work on this front section. So you're going to get this entire square here, hinge this up like that. As you can see, there is two tabs, two slots that's just going to lock into place. And then you can just split this entire section and unravel it like that. So just split that section here, put that off to the side and then you're going to get these other panels, hinge these out hinge these out and as you can see there is corresponding posts and ports on both sides and you're going to tab both halves together to kind of form this sort of like a weapon tower so just tab all that into place and we're going to be uh, back to that piece a little bit later in the transformation then you're going to get this entire front portion of the trailer or the chest you're going to get these sections here hinge these out on these ratchets hinge them out on these ratchets like that and then you can get this entire chest piece here, rotate this around like that. And that is it for the transformation for this piece. One way you know it's in the correct orientation, because I've actually been a bit confused for this part of the transformation before, just make sure the entire crotch, the back of the crotch is facing towards the front of the chest. And of course the front of the crotch is facing towards the back of the chest. And this little panel here can just kind of face out like that for now. Then we can actually bring out this entire other section here. Um, and then you're going to just pretty much separate the top half and the bottom half of the trailer like that. And then we're actually going to focus on the top half again i do apologize if there's a sun jolt a lot of these pieces are really really tight with the connections just separate like that and how all of this was tabbed in places is there's of course corresponding posts and ports and there's actually a couple tabs on this weapon right here and you can just remove this weapon and what you want to do is fold out the barrel and that will tab into place. Then you can actually hinge this little panel up and then hinge the handles out like that. And then we're going to put that off to the side as well. Then you're going to go to the section here. You're actually going to bring this panel out like that, hinge the foot in this panel down, and then you get this entire panel here, separate it from the foot. As you can see, there is two slots and two tabs. You're just going to fold that back. And that is it for that piece. So you're gonna do the exact same process on the other side. So just get this panel here, hinge this down with the foot, separate that panel from the foot, and then of course you can just get both pieces and put both these off to the side for now because we're pretty much done with those and then you can bring this a bottom section of the trailer let's just put all that off to the side there we go and then you're going to split them in half like that and then you can pretty much essentially bend at the elbow because these are actually the combiner arms and hands so just bend at the elbow bend at the elbow, and now we have all the pieces pretty much prepped and ready. Let's just combine all of them to form the base. You're actually going to flip to much the back side of the chest. There is a post there and a port right at this corner, and that is just going to plug into place and plug into place like that. And then if you want to, you can just collapse this panel here like that, and then you're just going to flip this around like that. And then what you want to do is get the entire leg section. As you can see, there is a post there and there is a port at this little corner section right here that is just going to plug into place like that. Same thing on the other side, just plug that in like that. And there we go. And I do apologize uh, if you can't see the full thing right now. I probably will have to adjust the camera after I fully transform and combine the thing because it gets pretty big and pretty long very fast. But as for the last few steps, you're just going to combine the blaster with this tower section, plug that into place. And there is two tabs here and two slots right there. So you're just going to align both those connections up and tab them into place. And there we have the fully combined base mode. So let's now take a look at the details.
So here we have Motormaster in his robot mode. Let's take a look at the details, starting at the very top with it. it has with some really nice metallic purple for the face, some red for the eyes, and some black for the main helmet section. And you love this really nice kind of silver gunmetal gray mixture for the entire arms and some of the chest. They actually use that like, some somewhat of the same color for the trailer, which I actually do quite like. And there's some more purple on the inside of the form of the arm there, which I think looks pretty cool. And there's a very classic discipline symbol at the shoulder, also done in purple. And I do love all the silver and glossy black for the entire chest with some really cool, interesting angles and circles and shapes which is pretty cool. There's quite a bit of black for the top of the legs and some more of that silver gray for the crotch. And I do love all this awesome circuitry detailing at the knees there. I think that looks really cool. This is actually what I was talking about earlier whenever he was in his truck mode. This actually kind of forms the top of the truck and of course the knees in his robot mode. But I think that looks really good. Tons of awesome scope work. Love the dark purple and the silver. And I always really like this kind of Easter egg or design tray that Hasbro decided to do. I always found it really funny, but I do quite like it. So you might have already seen it or kind of caught this little Easter egg or detail, but they actually sort of designed and sculpted his feet to actually somewhat resemble the front of the truck. It's actually kind of a downsized version of the front of his truck. So we actually do have some small wheels sculpted in there and a little mirror. And of course the front windscreen and the grill also done silver. I always found this like the funniest thing, but I think it actually looks really, really cool. And if we do look at that so pro side profile over there, um, overall really not looking that bad. There is a bit of this back section here, but I really wouldn't call it ugly. And it's definitely not the worst backpack I've seen. I definitely think they probably could have cleaned up the front of the legs and the side side here because of course there is these panels here they do look cool from the front of course all that nice circuitry detailing but you can see quite a bit, a bit of hinges and and panels which does not look the greatest but if we do look at the back back of the legs and arms overall really clean really nicely put away not much kibble or hollowness there's a bit here and again the backpack definitely not the worst i've seen i only do really have one uh complaint about the backpack it really would have been nice if you could have stored the sword on the back you know like really cool like there could have been a port you know and a post on the sword or vice versa and he could have like stored on his back. I don't think he ever did that like in the G1 show or any appearance we've seen Motormaster in like in TV or um, comics or anything, but I still think that would have been a nice option. I really would have liked that. Um, but that is it for details. So if you do have the previous mainline Commander class Motormaster, the articulation is the exact same. If this is your first time uh, experiencing this mold, keep in mind this is a Commander class, so it is very, very poseable. So the head can look side to side. It can look slightly up and down, and it cannot tilt side to side. The arms can move out and in, forward and back. There is a bicep rotation and elbow bend. There is a full functioning wrist rotation, which is always good to see. And if you do move the arms out of the way, the waist can rotate all the way around, completely unhindered. Um, the legs can kick forward and back on ratchets. Uh, ratchets also out to the side. There is rotation at the top of the leg. There is a really good knee bend on, uh, I, I would say about two hinges sort of, um, which is pretty good to a very good degree. And there is also an ankle pivot to a very good degree. Um, and there is actually a bit of filler plastic there, which is pretty nice, this little back piece of plastic. So that's really good to see. Um, so pretty good articulation. I'd say probably my only complaint is the hands because I'm pretty sure this is the only commander class we've gotten that doesn't have finger articulation. He does have a wrist rotation, which I'm glad, but, um, you know, uh, the recently uh, released, you know, commander class Armada Optimus Prime, he had some finger articulation in the fully combined mode. Uh, Ronimus Prime did, Jetfire did. Yes, Skylinks didn't have finger articulation, but he really doesn't even have hands or fingers, so I'm not really going to complain about that. So I definitely think, considering this is a commander class, they probably could have put, like, some, you know, maybe they could have just had, like, the index finger, maybe some thumb articulation would would have been a nice touch, but that's really my only complaint. As for accessories, he does come with two, but the blaster mostly comes into play later for the fully combined Minosaur mode and the base mode, so I really don't need to show off now, because you can you can sort with Motormaster, but it's way out of proportion. It's huge for this figure, so I typically would not advise to start with this figure, but he does come with a sword. This is kind of a signature weapon we uh, usually see him with, and I do love that very bright, uh, shiny silver, and it's the exact same molding, of course, just a different paint from that mainline release, and you can can store in either hands, which I think looks pretty cool. You can pull off some awesome, you know, uh, sword poses, which I think looks very, very cool. And I do love that very intricate, interesting design with the hilt. And again, it would have been nice if they could have stored it on the back of the figure, but overall, I would say that's more of a want rather than a complaint. Um, but now for some comparisons, here he is with his mainline release. And I think the overall look pretty cool side by side mold wise they are the exact same thing of course really just a matter of preference of which deco you prefer um, and please do let me know in the comments of the two motor masters um, which ones you like more and I think I'm still gonna stick with the exclusive one I just really love that kind of silver gunmetal gray mixture and I would say definitely where the legs are concerned overall that's pretty much the exact same thing the main change you know in color and appearance is really that top half section but um 
We can do a bit of a side view if you're interested. I think that overall looks pretty cool. And so that is it for that comparison. So now for another truck comparison. Here he is with Optimus Prime. And yes, relatively Motor Master is, I would say, around the same size as a, you know, uh, as an uh, leader class, which some people might be discouraged because of it, because he is a commander class. You know, he's like about $90. His mainline release was, of course, keep in mind, this is the exclusive one. So this was about almost $200 because it came with those uh, those four other Stunticons. But a lot of people had a problem with that, which you're mostly paying for the engineering, not really the size, just kind of like um, uh, the Kingdom Runimus Prime. He was pretty small for commander class, definitely, you know, Jetfire. I think is probably the biggest commander class. Um, you know, Skylink's kind of on all four, so it's hard to, uh, to actually uh, decide on that. But you're definitely paying more for the engineering, you know, the amount of steps. Also, keep in mind, this figure has a ton of modes. You know, he has the combined mode, the room mode, and the truck mode with the trailer. So um, I think this is definitely worth the money. And for one final comparison, here he is with Ronimus Prime, as you can see again, they are quite small for Commander class, but they actually have very intricate, detailed uh, transformations with a lot of different steps and kind of movements we've never really seen before. So um, I definitely think it's worth the money with the engineering. And so that is pretty much it for comparisons and this room mode. Let's quickly take a look at the base mode. So here we have the base mode. Let's take a look at the details. And in case you're wondering if there's any new molding or any added pieces of this base mode different from the previous mainline release, no, there is not. There is no new tooling or added pieces. It's pretty much the exact same base mode, just a few added pamps. The same layout, the same transformation, pretty much the same thing. Really just a matter of preference of which base mode and which appearance you prefer. And if you do have a preference of the base modes, let me know in the comments. I really don't have a preference of either release because truth be told, the base modes from Hasbro have never really been my favorite thing just in general. You know, they made quite a few, you know, they made this one, they made one with the mainline release, they've actually made some with the other previous commander classes like Ronimus Prime and Skylinks, and actually the most recent one, Armada Optimus Prime, and they've just been okay, I've never really actually had a need to, you know, uh, display it in my collection, usually with this trailer from Motormaster, both Motormasters, usually I either have it in the trailer form, or the combined form with the rest of the Stunticons in the Minosaur Combiner, because it's just never really been my favorite thing, but let's quickly take a look at the details, so of course, starting at the very front, we have this entire sort of tower turret section, which is pretty pretty cool. They actually use one of the accessories, this entire blaster, which the blaster you can use on Motormaster if you want to, as I showed before, but it's quite big for the figure, even though he is a commander class. It's, I think, mostly probably specific for this mode and Minasaur, but I do have a complaint with the blaster. It's an okay blaster, but I never really liked how flat it was. Again, you can actually have this entire section here uh, two different ways. You can actually have it angled up to be like a computer screen or sort of a targeting system, or you can have it flat, but I definitely think the top of the blaster is way too flat and bland. Also, I'm not a big fan of the open waffling. I'm not sure if you can see that there, but the open waffling is facing up, which is not very good. I would be okay if it faces down, but that's just how they wanted to position the weapon. Um, but my main complaint is it's not blaster piece compatible, which is unfortunate because it is a turret. You know, you kind of want to, you know, plug some blaster pieces in there and have, you know, Motor Master just attacking and destroying all the Autobots. You know, I think that'd be really cool for pictures and images. I guess if you wanted to, you could maybe tape or kind of glue a blaster piece in there if you're okay with that. But unfortunately, it is not an option. I also am not a big fan of these side sections here because I think overall they did a really good job uh, hiding all the, you know, combiner pieces and combiner kibble because the trailer does, you know, pretty much serve as a base of the Minosaur Combiner. It's the, you know, the arms, the legs, and the chest, pretty much the entire skeleton of it, which is cool. And I think overall they did a pretty good job hiding those pieces and kind of keeping them out of sight. But you can obviously tell these are the Combiner legs and feet. The feet do just kind of stick out there. So it would have been nice maybe for the cover of those pieces just a tad bit better. But I will give uh, credit where credit is due. They actually do hide the chest and the arms pretty well. These are actually the arms here, and they're pretty well covered away, which I'm really glad with that. Um, and if you're wondering with the turret, there is a bit of articulation. It can, of course, move side to side. It really can't move up or down. As far as, you know, the base mode goes, it actually is pretty well put together. That is actually another one of my complaints I've had with previous base modes. Sometimes they're just like a hodgepodge mess, and they just do not want to stay together. I think overall, all the pieces do want to stay together pretty well. If you do, just leave it on a shelf. But if you do want to pick it up, I would probably advise to maybe separating some of the pieces, you know, and like taking one piece at a time, because it's pretty hard to hold all of this in like, you know, two hands or one hand because it's very very long and spread out but i think it's a pretty fun base mode so now for one of his main you know gimmicks or kind of features is you can grab motor master and actually store or kind of have him uh use the turret there so you really just have to kind of put each hand in the handle there like that 
and there we go. I could probably, you know, definitely come up with a more interesting pose for this just for the time being while I'm recording. This is the best I can do. And again, it really would be nice if this was blast to piece compatible, but that is pretty much it for the base mode. Let's now get down to transformation. So now for transformation, I'm going to start off by transferring Motormaster here into Minosaur's head and chest, and then we will move on to the trailer. So first up, what you want to do is move the arms out, then you're going to rotate at the waist all the way around, then you can actually open up the panels at the back of the arms, fold in the hand, and close that up. Do the exact same process on the other arms, just open up the panel in the back of the arm, fold in the hand like that. Then you can go to the back of the figure, get this entire backpack section here, hinge this entire section over the head, and fold like that. There is two tabs here, and slots in these entire little uh, plastic bar pieces and that will just tab into place then you're actually going to untab the entire head of Motormaster and then you're actually going to get the entire head of Minosaur and just pull this entire section out it can be pretty hard to get because it's a very little space in there you just gotta slowly wiggle this entire section out like that's then you can actually fold the entire motor master head in and close that up like that and then of course just hinge this section down and then you can bring the antennas out or kind of little ear pieces out like that then you can actually untap the arms from the main chest or torso get this entire panel here disconnect that as well as you can see there is a slot there and a tab there that's how that was tapped into place then you can actually bring the entire arm all the way up like that hinge these panels back then you can rotate at the shoulder rotate the shoulder and then you can actually rotate at the bicep rotate at the bicep and then you can actually hinge these sections down then you can bend out the at the elbow because there is a port there and a post right there and that's how that's going to tab into place unfortunately on my copy i've actually never gotten them fully kind of flush and tabbed into place if you see that that is the reason why hopefully on your copy it can be a bit better there's usually a bit of a gap or crevice there which is a bit unfortunate but i'm pretty sure the mainline release was kind of like that as well but now what you're going to do is more, uh, mostly focus on the legs now you're actually going to to rotate at the top of the leg just make sure these uh, knee panels are kind of the front of the leg panels are actually facing towards each other like that you're actually going to open up the leg like that and then you're going to pretty much collapse the entire leg in like that and then you can actually fold the entire panel over to pretty much lock it into place like that do the exact same process on the other side so just open up this panel on the inside of the leg hinge the entire leg up like that and then just fold it over to lock it into place. There is a tab there and a slot right there. And that's how that's going to tab into place. Do the exact same process on the other side. So just align all of that up and tab it into place. And then you're going to get these bottom panels here. There is a slot there and a tab right there. That's just going to fold down and tab in place. Same process on the other side fold that down and tab that into place then you can get these entire sort of uh, side sections or side panels these will um, also fold down as well there is a slot there and a tab there tab that into place and tab that into place and just get that in there and that is it for the transformation for motormaster to the head and chest of minosaur so let's now transform the trailer into pretty much the entire skeleton and a base of a minosaur so you're actually going to separate this entire front section here and i do apologize for the sudden jolt it's pretty tight there we go and how all this was tabbed in place as you can see there's a ton of posts and ports you can put that section off to the side you're actually going to get this entire square here hinge this up there is two tabs and two slots that's just going to tab into place like that and you can just pretty much unravel or sort of split this entire section in half and then you're going to open these panels up and then you can tab all of this together like that and there we go tab all that up and we can put the section off to the side then you're going to get this entire front section of the trailer get these little sections here on the ratchets hinge these down and out you can then rotate at the chest and then you can rotate at the waist or crotch and there we have pretty much the entire front chest and waist section all done and we can also put that off to the side for now then what you want to do is split this entire section here like that then we can actually kind of focus on the feet now so you're going to split this section in half again apologies for the sudden jolt it's pretty secure and tight there we go and then you can remove the weapon put that off to the side as well you're going to uh, bring out this panel 
and the foot will sometimes actually kind of come out as well. You can actually separate this panel from the bottom of the foot, so there are slots there and tabs right there, and you're going to fold that back, and then you can get this top panel here, fold this up, there is a tab and slot, and then you can tab that into place like that. Do the exact same thing on their sides, so just bring this entire panel and foot down, fold that back, get this entire panel here, fold that up, and there we have the legs all done, and then you're going to do the arms, so split this entire section in half, and then you're going to get the entire fist, and of course fold that down, and then you can actually get these panels here, these will just fold in, and I already did show how you actually attach all the stenticons to the legs and arms, so of course the next time when we actually combine all the pieces, I will have already put the figures on there. If you do want to know how to attach them, of course, just go to uh, pretty much at the end of every uh, deluxe, so at the end of drag strip, I'll show how you combine drag strip as piece, and so on, and of course for the rest of the deluxes. So there we have the arm all done, and do the exact same process on the other arm. So just fold the hand down, get these panels here, fold them in, and then it for the transformation for the trailer and motor master so now we have all the pieces pretty much ready and prepped let's combine all the pieces to form the stunticon combiner menasaur so now for combining all the pieces to form Minasaur, what you want to do is grab the head and chest, then you're going to grab this other chest panel and waist and crotch piece. So how this is going to tab together is there is a tab on the chest, there is a slot pretty much on the inside of this chest panel, and there is two posts on here and of course two ports right there. And you're just going to align all of it up and that will just tab together like that. And then there's these two gray panels right here, which is just going to flip up and really just kind of solidify the connection like that. And the very last step to combine or kind of attach all these pieces is there is this flap here there is a post and there is a port on the inside and that will just fold up and again kind of solidify the entire connection then you're going to grab the leg so break down just form the left leg that's just going to slide into place like that and then you're going to flip it around just i'm going to show you kind of how the connection works there's this kind of little spring loaded mechanism here and then you're going to grab the right leg which is wild rider and of course that little kind of uh, post here is just going to really slide into that little kind of mechanism or kind of slot section there and there we have the legs fully attached and then of course we just kind of flip this all the way back around and as you can see it's getting very very tall so i'm going to try to move the camera up just a tab it so you can see the whole thing and then at drag strip there's this entire little kind of square section here and there is the slot that's just going to slide over the top of that section there and into place and then you can of course grab the very last piece that being dead end and just slide that over the top as well and into place and there we have the fully combined menasaur let's take a look at the details here we have Menasaur fully combined. Let's take a look at the details, starting at the very top with the head with some really nice silver for the face, some red for the eyes, some black for the main helmet section and the antennas or ears with some really nice black for the entire chest with tons of really cool angles and panels and a really cool kind of layered panel effect with a massive Decepticon symbol in the center done in purple and white outline. I do like how sh sleek and shiny it is. I'm not really going to cover a lot of the details of the arms and legs because a lot of those details are repeated from, you know, these separate individual figures like drag strip, you know, and and, and the legs. So I'm really going to be mostly focusing on the details we didn't see before in the other modes, but I do love all the angles and panels and details there. Probably could have used a bit of paint though to actually, you know, make them pop more, a bit more noticeable, but I do love all the red and the yellow and black for the crotch with some more red and yellow and silver for the top of the legs. I do like that whole spring-loaded gimmick, which is cool and all, but I definitely think on those panels that actually, you know, fold out to fill in those gaps, they probably should have added some paint apps. That was actually one of my major complaints with the mainline release of Minasaur. There's just a ton of sculpt work there, which looks really good, but it's just that one solid gray color. I do like the very Decepticon purple for the hands and feet. I think that's a really nice touch. And I guess it can quickly, you know, just show off drag strip and dead end. Of course, they really just split kind of the front half and the back half. Um, you know, separate from each other, and uh, I think that looks really cool, you know, for the uh, back half sort of forming uh, where the wrist is, and of course the front half kind of forming the shoulder there. I think that looks pretty cool. And if we do look at the other side, and you might be wondering why this wheel is kind of sticking out and not fully flush. Well, unfortunately, this one's kind of bent. I try and compress it a lot, and it just does not want to stay uh, tabbed in, unfortunately. So you might be, uh, that is the reason why that's kind of uh, pressed out or kind of not fully compressed. But here we do have dead ends there, looking pretty cool. 
And we can look at the back of the figure. Overall, um, pretty good back. Not much, you know, kibble or junk or anything. We actually do have, uh, um, we do have Wild Rider and uh, Breakdown back here, which if you do prefer them to be at the front, you technically technically can rotate the legs around, um, but it probably will make the figure pretty unstable to have the feet at the back instead of the front. But if you do want to see these, you can do that. That's the option if you want to, but I do like all of them back there. And you can all um, add all of their individual accessories. Um, I do have Breakdown's little back fit on there, but if you want to add all of their little, you know, accessories and weapons, you can. I kind of go back and forth between storing them and not storing them. I think it probably does look a tad better with them off because it just looks a bit more simple, a bit more G1-y. But if you don't want any, you know, any pieces left off or um, aside, uh, you don't want to worry about them losing them. Of course, you can just store them all on this uh, figure. But that is it for details. So I'm gonna try and show articulation. It's always very hard to show articulation for a combiner or a figure this big, you know, because there's so many joints and it's just so massive. So I'm going to try and do the best I can. So the head can look side to side. It cannot look up or down and it cannot, and it cannot tilt side to side either. There are ratchets at the shoulders and the arms. So of course they can hinge out and in forward and back. There is a bicep rotation and elbow bends. There is a full functioning wrist rotation also on a ratchets. It would have been nice if there was some finger articulation, kind of going back to my point earlier. It would have been okay, you know, if Motormaster had no finger articulation, but they had some for Menasaur. That's actually kind of what they did with the recent uh, Commander Class Armada Optimus. You know, the base Optimus Prime figure had no finger articulation, but the fully combined one did. So that would have been okay if they did that sort of same uh, thing for this, but unfortunately they did not. Um, there is a waist rotation, and if we do move the arms out of the way, I'm going to try and show the legs as smooth as I can. It's pretty hard, but the legs can kick forward and back out to the side. There is a rotation at the top of the leg. There is a knee bend and an ankle pivot. I'm not showing all the joints to the full degree because it's pretty hard to show, you know, the full leg kick forward because it just gets so big and just really hard to handle. But really good articulation, no complaints there. Um, one major improvement with the QC and the tolerance uh, of this figure was the legs. Unfortunately, on my mainline copy of Minasaur, they just never wanted to stay in those slots. You know, the connection I showed uh, just a second ago when I was fully combining Minasaur, all the pieces together, um, the legs would just always want to slide off whenever I'm actually posing or messing with the uh, Minasaur figure, but these actually do want to stay, which I'm really glad, but all the other joints are really good, nice tight ratchets, uh, no problems there, and I'm actually really glad that this uh, figure, this commander, has an ankle pivot. As for accessories, of course, I, I mentioned before, all those individual, you know, small little plasters you can store on there, but... Um, as for the one specific to Minasaur, he does have the sword, which quite a few people had a problem of with the mainline one. They always thought it was too small for uh, Minasaur and too big for Motormaster. And quite a few people said they should have uh, included two, you know, a sword for Minasaur and a sword, uh, sword for Motormaster, which I do agree. I definitely think this is way too small for him, but it still does look cool in hand. You can put it in either hand there, which I think looks pretty cool. You know, you can bend at the elbow there. Um, he also does have a blaster, which isn't really my favorite accessory. You can store it in the hand, or you can actually have this sort of separate tower thing. So that was another people's uh, complaint with this Minasaur combiner. There's actually some other pieces left over. This entire tower piece from the trailer and the base mode has no uh, area or place to be stored on the combiner, which is unfortunate. It really would have been nice if they uh, were able to actually, you know, store or uh, uh, make it a part of this combiner, because, you know, if you do want to display it in the combined form, what are you supposed to do? Just have this, like, tower off to the side or something? I don't know. Um, but the blaster, you can store a part of this tower or you can put it in his hand, which I really don't like either. So I typically kind of just have the blaster in this thing off to the side, not really a part of this. That is just how I like to display it anyway. But now for some comparisons, here he is with the most recent Commander class figure. Hopefully I can get them all in shot. Uh, the Armada Optimus Prime. And I think they look very cool side by side. As you can see, this guy just towers over him and they look really impressive side by side. And that is it for that comparison. So now for one final comparison, probably one you've been waiting for this entire review. I'm going to compare him with the other mainline Minasaur. So hopefully I can get this entire thing in shot. This is going to be absolutely crazy. But here we have the mainline release with the exclusive one. I do apologize if I can't get the entire thing in frame. They're just two massive pieces, but they look very impressive uh, side by side. 
Um, and let me know of the two Minosaurs, which ones you prefer, the mainline or the exclusive. They're the exact same in the, uh, thing in molding, just some out of paint ups. Um, definitely one area that they just didn't decide to improve on both of these is the front of the legs. They're quite boring and bland. I do think there's probably some upgrade kits out there that might add like some stickers and stuff. I've never really been a big sticker fan, but if you're okay with that and you have like my complaints like with the legs, you could probably fix that. But me personally, I've just never really liked stickers. But that is it for that comparison and just comparisons all together. Let's now get down to the final thoughts. Now for my final thoughts on the Transformers Legacy Evolution Stunticon Minosaur Multipack. Now one of my main things I check before I even pre a multipack or a set with multiple figures is the price. Is the multipack worth the price for how many figures are included? Truth be told, I was expecting this pack to be overpriced because Hasbro's done that in the past. A good example is a couple years ago, Hasbro released a Stu Series Devastator multipack that was like $100 overpriced, but I'm happy to say they didn't do the same with the Stunticon Minosaur Multipack. Now if you already have the mainline releases of the Legacy Stunticons, is this multipack a must-buy? And several ways I think the multi-pack versions or decos of these molds are better. One of my main problems with the original versions of these molds is they didn't have enough details or paint apps, and their new releases fixed that. Another bonus with this exclusive pack is that Breakdown comes with an alternate head sculpt. As far as Tarns and QC go, pretty much the same as the previous versions of the mold. Articulation for all four deluxes is pretty average for a deluxe class figure, and Motor Master is very posable. My only complaint is the figure should have had some finger articulation considering it's a commander class figure, and if they didn't want to give Motor Master finger articulation, give it to the Combiner Menace. As for transformation for all five figures, if you have the previous Legacy Mainline Stunticons, you know exactly what to do. If this is your first time with these molds, I would say the transformation is pretty straightforward and fun. The only complex transformation is Motormaster. Now for their alt modes, I love all the awesome sports cars with the nice added paint apps. Um, and the weapon storage for all the figures is good. Motormaster's truck mode is awesome, very menacing with how big and chunky it is. And I love all the dark purple and gunmetal gray details. Just, um, it just adds to that very evil menacing style. As for the combined Minosaur mode, pretty similar to the previous version, just some added paint apps and details which look really good, but it would have been nice if they did something with the head sculpt, like maybe some new molding or just a few added details would have been nice. The combined mode is very poseable with lots of nice tight joints and strong ratchet to all the major hinges or limbs. Since this is my 1900 subscriber special, here are two random subscriber shouts. So shout out to PT Zero Animation and Silver Devil. Thank you for subscribing and supporting my channel. And thank all of you for 1900 subscribers. So what did you think of this exclusive multi-pack? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this review and I will see you next time.